Welcome back guys on my YouTube channel. Today I'm here with another tutorial video. We have the CRF 300L, a bike that's been super popular in the United States, in the UK and in Australia. Not that popular here in Europe, but I'll show you how to fit the ultralight rally kit by Rebel Exports. For this video, I'll use my point of view and film everything on the phone as most of you really appreciated the last tutorial video on the KTM 690. I won't go into details on what you need to remove. I mean, we'll remove the headlight, the OEM dashboard. But as you know, amongst you viewers, there are also a lot of companies that look at my videos in order to understand how to develop products. So not to make it too easy for them. I'll show you just the installation and not the removal of the OEM dashboard and headlight. But with no further ado, let's change the view and start assembling this bike. Once you remove the headlight and the OEM brackets and the dashboard, keep one thing in mind, the OEM turn indicators won't fit on the kit or you can fit them, but you'll have to custom make the mount for it. The Rebel X Tower has the holes already for the turn indicators and we'll show it to you after with the turn indicators mounted, but for standard aftermarket uh, turn indicators, homologated so you can get them street legal, but with the 10 millimeter thread. Once you removed everything and disconnected the wires that are in the way and you're ready to place the frame clamp. You have this reinforcement bracket. You'll need to install this first. Get your M6 by 20 bolts, put them through. And then on this side, you'll put the washer and the nut. You can tighten this later when it's installed on the bike. We're now ready to install the tower bracket on the triple clamps. You'll make it go through like this and then just use the M5 times 16 in the captive and screw it in. No need to tighten it yet. You'll just tighten it by hand so this will help you then put all the other bolts. So okay, the clamp is in position and now we'll start putting first the lower bolts and then the upper bolts. Now, once you place this, you, we're gonna put the M6 by 20 black bolts down there and we'll want to add some thread lock. Tighten initially these only by hand and only once we place also the upper ones, then we'll tighten everything. Now that we'll tighten the upper bolts, be careful because on the left hand side, looking at the bike, you'll have the M8 by 25 and on the other side, the M8 by 20. So basically where you have the extra bracket, you'll have the longer bolt. And obviously the nut will always put a bit of thread lock. To make your life easier, always put the bolts and the, just tighten them by hand and the last part you will do with the tool. On the left hand side, be sure you have this bracket in this position because then we'll bolt the brake holes together on this bracket. Before putting the bolt through here, you'll want to tighten the clamp. After tightening the upper ones and use the torque value that's in the manual of the bike for these bolts for both upper and lower. You do also the lower after you did the upper ones. Once you tighten all the bolts, it's time to put the M6 by 20 through from the outside towards the inside and then put this nut with the flange and tighten everything together. Probably you want to add a bit of Loctite here. Then choose on which side of the tower you want to put the on off switch. I'll put it on the right hand side. Now we're ready to put on the tower. I won't go into details on uh, how to place uh, which bolts where, spacers and uh, lights and brackets, cause you can see this, I'll put somewhere here, the link to the video where I show every bracket, how it goes pre-assembled together. You can watch that video if you need to figure out where like the lights go placed, uh, these brackets uh, and so on. And Giacomo will put some B-roll of the tower going around. To slide in the tower, it's very easy get all the cables and put them already inside the tower just so that you don't have them going out. Slide in 
and put the M8 by 20 bolts and then secure it with the flange nuts on the inside. Quick tip and a very cool feature of this tower, having threaded spacers, we can remove the left or right hand side of the tower so that you can then place all the wiring properly, do everything, place everything nicely with zip ties and then put everything back inside. Now I'll show you how to assemble the dashboard bracket. This on the tower will be fitted like this. You'll first get the OEM rubbers and put them with the taller part facing upwards. We'll get our dashboard. Be sure to have the indicators here on the top and this hole for the USB ports on the top. We'll press it in, but before making it go in, very important, this cable and connector, make it slide in from the side. Press the dashboard in until you see it going to the end of the travel of the rubbers. We will then use the OEM bolts and place them back on in order to fix our dashboard. If you bought the optional add-on uh, USB ports with voltmeter display, you'll get this and put it through this hole. Lock it into place. If you wanted to secure it better, use uh, a bit of tape, the one for plumbing, and put it ar around here. It will just make this uh, more firm when you go and tighten it. Now that we placed uh, this side back on the tower and also placed this, you can see it from this view. I missed this step, but it already has the threaded insert, so you'll just need to place the bracket once you have it with all the dashboard on in here and put the M6 uh, by 16 bolts. On this build, uh, you see the fuse box on the left-hand side, but in reality, the fuse box will be always on the right-hand side. Last bracket we need to mount is this. This is the bracket that lets you mount either Garmin mounts, Carpe Eater, any tablet that you want, or also if you get the roadbook option, you'll have here the roadbook bracket. This is very easy to mount. You, you can either mount it like this or the other way around based on which tilt angle you need. You'll place it, find the position where you want your device and then use the M5 by 16 bolts, run them through and then put the nut and the washer behind and tighten everything and then decide where you want it. At this point, uh, you'll probably also want to sit on the bike and adjust the tilt angle of the headlights before then we go and put the windshield on. Before you start asking me in the comments about turn indicators, the OEM turn indicators of the CRF300L cannot be placed anywhere on the tower. On the tower, there is one hole where you can fit aftermarket turn indicators, but in case you want really small ones like these ones, these will be available as optional together with their own bracket that you can fit just plug and play here on the tower. But some of you maybe already own some aftermarket turn indicators and at this point you can uh, DIY any bracket even easily on uh, the triple clamps or anywhere on the tower because you have a lot of space and you actually have one of the holes on the tower that is meant for turn indicators. It just depends how big the turn indicator is because in this case they're pretty small and they would end up being behind the windshield and behind the sticker. But anyway, if you need turn indicators on your build, these are available as optional. Last but not least, we are ready now to install the windshield. You can see then from here, you can adjust the bracket both in angle and back and forward. I usually put it on the second hole of the bracket on both sides, so up and down, and then on the last hole available on the tower. And this seems to be fine. You can even bring it a bit more backwards. To install the windshields very easy, you put these rubber grommets you just slide them through inside the bracket, get the windshield and then get these bolts with the plastic washer. First thing you'll do, you'll place them in by hand. Once you place everything by hand, then you'll tighten the bolt until you see the bolt almost coming out when it's flush with this because it will bring it back and uh, you'll see then it, it will be nice and firm. When it's at this point, it's more than enough and you don't need to tighten more. And now you have completed the installation of the Rebel X uh, Ultralight Rally Kit. 
Okay guys, that's all for today's tutorial. I hope this will help you out while preparing your CRF 300L, turning it into a more adventure bike, getting a bit more wind protection, but most of all, get a much, much better lighting and placement for all your smart devices or roadbook holder. This in particular was a demo bike that I used uh, to test the kit and see everything it works. It's basically new, it has 8,000 kilometers it's for sale I guess it will be sold very quickly in the description you see the link to order your ultralight rally kit it's now in pre-order and they'll start deliveries in July I personally really like this bike I wish I could keep it because uh, I think that with a different exhaust a bit more power it's really really an enjoyable bike with long service intervals and ideal to go just anywhere other thing this bike needs is much stiffer suspensions but this said thanks guys for watching leave in the comments below what's your opinion on the crf 300l tell me if you already own it and you've used it on many adventures subscribe to the channel follow me on instagram and i'll see you in the next one ciao